So I want to talk about X uh, polarized n fold. So X has an ample divisor. And I'm assuming that the canonical class of X is n minus 3 times A. So this is a projectively, I'm sorry. This is a projectively Gorenstein condition. And then I want a to the n is 5. So the, the degree, the degree of, uh, of x under the embedding a is 5. And h naught of x a is n plus 2. Yes? So for example, if I write x of 5, in straight projective space n plus 1, then um, you get the dimension is n because it's a hypersurface. The canonical class is uh, minus n plus 2 plus 5. So it's a five, 3 minus 5n. And the degree is 5, and the number of sections is so uh, n equals 1, this would be uh, a curve C with Kc is twice A, and A is a G25. <coughs> yes. So if you think about a G25, it's taking my curve and it's mapping it in the direction of P2 with degree 5. And one possibility is just that it's a hypersurface, so that it just maps C isomorphically to a plane quintic curve. However, there is another, pro there is another possibility. So other possi possible case is that uh, A, the linear system A, is a fixed point P, a base point, plus twice a G12. Yes, so if I lose one point here, then we're on this bound of Clifford's theorem, and so the only way that can happen is for this to be um, uh, um, a fixed point plus 2G12. So this is uh, C has g to 6. <clears throat> yes. And then n equals 2. So there's a really very famous result of Horikawa that uh, these surfaces uh, belong to three different families. Family 1, a family 2. So 2 is where the linear system has a base point, the same as here, and it maps 2 to 1, same as here, to a quadratic surface. And that case divides into 2, so there's fa family 2a and 2b, and uh, 2b, 2b is where the, uh, so here's, quadric of rank 3, so it can happen that S, so this is a surface, so I'm writing S, maps 2 to 1 there. So it's a double cover of this singular quadric. Yes? And uh, Korikoa proves that if you're in this case, then these surfaces have a deformation in the family 1, so a deformation to nice guys that stand up out of, uh, in, in, P, in P3, not double covering the, the, Q, the Q. And they also deform in this direction, where I just uh, let the Q become a quadric of rank 4. Yes? So the same, basically the same happens in all, uh, in all dimensions. And I want, uh, so, uh, if you take a curve of genus 6, which is hyperelliptic, with this, uh, <clears throat> with this uh, P 
here, 2p is in Kc, is in, sorry, 2 is in G12. Right. So if I take twice of this divisor, that's, on the one hand, it's 5 times the G12. On the other hand, it's uh, the canonical class of a curve. Yes. So it follows that the point P is a Weierstrass point. This will be important <coughs> in what comes up. So, uh, you know, if, if I have a curve, a hyperliptic curve like this, with a G25 of this form, then I can, it will, in the, in the moduli of curves, in the moduli of curves with a G25, it will move out to a, to a, a, a non-hyperliptic uh, plane quintic. And that's sort of basically easy and elementary to think of in geometric terms. However, in commutative algebra, it's going to be, uh, it's, really, it's really very tricky. So this is a famous case. So Horikawa told me repeatedly, I'm not interested in your canonical rings uh, and so on. But this gives, in some ways, the neatest, the cleanest algebraic geometric treatment of this. Horikawa's proof uses Kadara-Spencer uh, Kadara deformation theory, so it's primarily analytic, primarily <coughs> complex analytic. Yes. So uh, let me state the gen this is a sort of pre pre preparatory theorem. I want this A to be ample. And I want this X to be uh, not too soon enough. So theorem uh, x, so either a, a is free and defines an isomorphism x isomorphic under the embedding a to x of 5 in p n plus 1, or a has a single transverse base point and uh, so then I do x blow up of x so this is just the one point blow up of x and this is 2 to 1 to uh, a quadrant in P3, in P n plus 1. So it's a rational map. I have to blow it up to resolve the indeterminacy. And Q has rank 3, 4, 4. Yes, so... Uh, uh, you know, I think a, a geometer is not going to be very surprised by this. The point gets blown up, and then uh, the exceptional locus of the blow-up is uh, a copy of p n minus 1, and this is mapped, uh, you know, because the linear system has a tran this transverse base point means that uh, h naught of a times O x maps to the maximal ideal p times O x of a. Right, so this is surjective. So you know that <coughs> passing through the points p, I have all possible local functions. Right, and so that the exceptional locus you expect it to map into uh, a p n minus one. <coughs> This is the tangent space to, to, uh, to x uh, contained in this quadrant. So when I have a quadrant like that, it can only have rank 3 or 4. Yes. So uh, I don't want to go into the whole proof of this, but uh, so sketch proof. Um, <clears throat> I've got a... So let's, let's do a resolution of indeterminacies uh, 
then I get this, uh, uh, I can do sigma up a star of A, and this is nef, <coughs> because uh, it's the pullback of a, an ample divisor on X, and at the same time I can write uh, sigma up a star A is uh, a mobile, um, what do I want to write? A mobile linear system plus a base divisor. So this is a free, free linear system, and this one is fixed. Yes, so I, you know, after resolving indeterminacy, I can arrange the base locus to be a, a divisor. Right, and then uh, we calculate sigma upper star A to the power of N is 5. So that's just the assumption. And then, uh, so I want to write, I want to write this as, so this is M plus B to the N. And the, the point is that M plus B is an F and also M is an F. And so I want to write this greater than, greater than, and then in the middle I'm going to write b plus m plus b to the power of r minus i times m to the i. Yes, so I'm starting <coughs> off with this number which is 5, and at the end I'm getting down to m to the power of n. Yes, so this is a free linear system, the, uh, uh, this m to the n is, uh, if the map were birational, it would be the degree of the image. If the, Im if the map is finite to one, it'll be, um, <coughs> it'll be the degree of the map times the degree of the image. Yes, and uh, this must be greater than or equal to four. Yes. So there is another case where the image is smaller dimensional, but uh, uh, that is also we also get rid of that. So in in each of these steps, each of these steps, I'm I'm taking away one power of b, so I'm getting uh, b times um, anyway. So the this chain of inequalities has only one solution. That m to the n minus 1 times b is 1, and everything else, everything else is equality. Yeah, so I have a, a number four here, less than something, less than something, and so on. And the difference between each of these is these linear systems, m, m plus b to some power, times m to some power, times b. Right? So I can only lose one in that chain, and I can only lose it at the last step. Right? And that's saying that uh, uh, the exceptional locus of this blow-up is mapped by rationally by, so this says b is p1, pn minus 1 embedded by m. Yes, so it's a sketch proof, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, but in any case, this is exactly, exactly Horikawa's proof. I should say, how Horikawa did the surface case, and Horikawa also did the threefold case, but it's not published. He told me he told me this around 1980 that he'd, that he'd done the analysis in also in three dimensions. Anyway, this is just sort of uh, following the surface proof. Okay, so I want to study this by graded rings. And the key is to understand the case n equals 1. Yes? 
so uh, let's just think about this uh, curve C with P plus 2G12 in one half of KC. Yes, then uh, so what is it? Here's a curve of, here's P1 with coordinates T1, T2. Yes, and here's the cur hyperelliptic curve. So it looks like this. <coughs> and one point, one of these via stress points is singled out. Yes, so I'm thinking of this as being T1 equals zero. And then there are 13 others. So uh, uh, let, let, I'm writing the Weierstrass points there. So this is a general hyperelliptic curve. Every, everybody should know this picture. That means I've only got 10 minutes. <laughs> OK, so uh, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to write u for OC in OC of P. Yes, so this is just the constant section of O of P. This is a line bundle, and this is a, a section of the line bundle that does not generate it at P. Yes, so this embedding, if you think of this as a section of a line bundle, has a zero at P. Yes, and then there's another guy, which is V, OC included in OC of P2 plus, plus P14. Yeah, the other Weierstrass points. Yes, so I have U squared equals T1. So that's this picture here. <coughs> T1 the, the coordinate T1 as a section of the G12 vanishes twice at P. Yes, and uh, I, think everybody, I, I think everybody should know that um, uh, the sum, of all 14 of the Weierstrass points, is in, is in 7 G12. So if you write down the equation W squared equals F14 of a hyperelliptic curve, then uh, the divisor of W is a, a linear equivalence between the zeros of W and the 14 branch points. Yes, and it's in degree 7. Yeah. Actually, this is u v squared equals f fourteen. So we're taking. So uh, I want to write down the ring of uh, C and A. And so this is the ring of C and this p plus two g one two. And um, you know these guys here t one t two u and v are not in this ring, yes? But uh, this ring is completely determined by uh, figuring out which of these, which monomials in these sections are in that particular ring. Yes. So uh, I, I, uh, some of you have already seen me do this kind of thing. I'm going to write down generators and relations for this ring, right? So. In degree one, I'm getting, uh, what, what am I getting? I'm getting u times t1 squared, u times t1 t2, u times t2 squared. Right, so I'm writing this x, x1, x2, x3. So, you know, there's a kind of tricky thing here, which is, uh, uh, I'm trying to generate this ring, and it's a subring of a bigger ring. 
So in the, the bigger ring is completely trivial to describe. I already told you it's T1, T2, U and V, and here are the two equations. Sorry, V squared is F13 of T1, T2. This is the homogeneous form of degree 13 on the plane whose roots are the 13 bias stress points excluding P. Yes, and so here I'm, uh, if I'm talking about this ring, I'm not allowed to use these elements, these elements in a bigger ring, uh, so I have to give names to everything. So in degree two, what do I get? Well, I have uh, five times the G12. So KC is five times G12, and its sections are T1 to the fifth, and so on, T1 to 42, and so on. So I refer to these collectively as S5 of T1, T2. Yes, and so here I get, uh, I, I, I'm getting S5, T1, T2, right? And so I'm writing these as S2 of x1, x2, x3, including one relation, x1, x3 equals x2 squared. But that's the equation of the conic, which is the image. Yes. So, uh, you know, the first one, for example, is t1 to the fifth, and that's just x1 squared. Yes. And so... Uh, of these, uh, of these six elements, I already own five of them. I own quadratic monomials in these, modulo this one relation. On the other hand, I don't own T2 to the fifth. Right, so I call that Y. Yes, and then in degree three, uh, so what do we own it? What, what do we have in degree three? We have u times s seven of t one t two. Yes. So the next thing up here is uh, p plus seven g one two. Yes. But we also have a v v times t one and v times t two. Yes, so uh, because, of, because of this, uh, the, 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 13, the 13 remaining Weierstrass points uh, plus one copy of the G12 are also in this linear system, 7 plus 2 PG. So, uh, so you know, I mean, a hyperelliptic curve has a Galois involution, has a Z2 type of hyperelliptic involution, and the ones, uh, the, the things that are polynomials in x1, x2, x3, and y are even with respect to that involution, and these are the guys that are odd. Yes, and so the relations holding are, so x1, x2, x2, x3, x3 squared, y, z1, z2. Those two by two minus, there are six two by two minus there. One of them is x1, x2 equals x2 squared, so I've already drawn attention to. And they're just saying that the ratio t1 to t2 is this common ratio. Yes, so that's six equations. And then there are three more, namely z1 squared, z1, z2, and z2 squared. So these are just, uh, you know, the intersection of my ring with uh, the equation, with the equa ideal holding in the bigger ring. And so this is, so I write down, uh, here I write down T1 squared F13. Yes, T1, T2, F13. T2 squared, 
F13. Right, and then I'm going to write square brackets. Yes. So, uh, you know, uh, you might think, for Christ's sake, uh, there's really only one equation here. So it's true there's only one equation, but if you're living in a scroll and you have some divisor in the scroll, it might happen that that divisor is not a multiple of the hyperplane section. You have to add a few fibers in order to make it. So this is, so to speak, the equation of a Cartier, div of a V divisor inside something. Okay, so what are these brackets? These are rendering uh, forms, these forms of degree 15 in uh, x1, x2, and y. Yes? So uh, we want, I want to think of these, these, anyway. Uh, so, uh, and, you know, the choice of these different renditions is important. It looks completely trivial, but it's the thing that differentiates the Horikawa type 1 and 2b family from the Horikawa type 2a and 2b families. So I'm going to try and say this uh, sort of uh, slowly and uh, patiently. So. Um, So what I'm going to do is this. I take this F13 of T1, T2, and so everything in there is, a, you know, the, the, the basis is pass of T, T to the I, T to the J, right, I plus J is 13. And every one, every one of these guys has either I, is greater than or equal to 10, or j is greater than or equal to 5. Yes? There's even a little overlap. Yes? So I write this as a t1 cubed plus, uh, so I'm going to write minus b to the T2 to the 10. Yes? And so I'm going, now I'm going to write this as A5 of X1, X2, Y. Yes? So this one here is of degree 10 in T1, T2, but uh, but then I can render him using only x1, x2, x3, and y. So in other words, I can make him part of the ring I'm interested in. Yes, and the b is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I probably got this wrong. Um, this is of degree 10 in... This is A2. Oh, so, so, sorry, let me... Uh... So this is of degree 10 in... Um... I'm sorry, I'm trying to... This is of degree 10 in... Uh, T1, T2, and so it's homogeneous of weighted degree 2 in X1, X2, and Y. Yes, and this one is of degree 5 in T1, T2. Right, so it's... Um, Uh, B5 is uh, in its linear in X1 and X2. Right, so it's B, uh, if I've got this right, 1 
uh, in x1, x2, x1, x2, and y, so it's, uh, I, I, hope, I hope that's right. Yes? So I choose these. without x1, x3, or x1, y2, or x2, y2. So y is y2. <coughs> so there'll be a y1. I'll introduce a y1 artificially later. That's why I'm just uh, doing this. So that's just because if without these monomials. If I, ever I see x1, x3, I can just replace him by x2 squared. If ever I see x1, uh, y2, I can replace him by uh, um, whatever it is, x2 cubed. Um, x2, x3 squared, and I can replace this by x3 cubed. Yes. So I'm working in a, I'm working in a, you know, I'm essentially doing a ring of invariants here. I'm uh, taking only elements of degree in, in T1, degree in T1 and T2 of degree divisible by 5. Right? And there's a choice here. Yes. <coughs> so, uh, hence, I can write... Uh, Z1, Z2, it, the equations, equations for Z1, Z2, in the form, uh, Z1 squared equals A, x1 minus b x3 to the fourth a x2 minus b x3 squared by 2 a x3 minus b uh, y2 squared yes <coughs> or I can write these alpha x1 squared minus b x3 to the fourth alpha x1 x2 minus b x3 squared y2 alpha x2 squared minus b y2 squared. Yes? So, in other words, I can take this guy, uh, the alpha and beta here, and uh, where, I, where I see the term x2 squared, I have a choice. I have a choice between either writing x2 squared or writing x1, x3. So, here with a is x1 alpha, the other way around. Yes. Uh, so this choice is called uh, um, which is A and which is B. This is A and this is B. Yes. And so uh, you know the, the, this is a this is a sort of uh, if you don't understand this point you can't do the calculation, right? Here I'm writing x two squared and here I'm writing x one x three. So in the ring, they're the same thing. But if I try to deform the ring, then they're only equal modular relations. Yes? So they're not identically equal as uh, expressions. So uh, what am I thinking? I told you, you're supposed to think of these three equations, for God's sake, as being only one equation. Yes? And uh, the equations that I'm writing here, on the left-hand side, Z1 z1 squared, z1, z2, z2 squared, I'm just replacing something in the top row with something in the bottom row. Yes? And here also I'm doing the same thing. So here, here, I'm taking x1 squared, replacing by x1, x2, replacing by x2 squared. 
x3, x3, uh, x3 squared goes to y2, and then x3 squared goes to y2 again. So this B form is explicitly a quadratic expression in the top row, and then a, the bilinear expression in the top and the bottom row, and then the quadratic expression in the, in the bottom row. Yes, And so uh, that will allow me to change x2 and x2 here by two linearly independent elements. So they'll allow that first equation to go from being quadratic of rank 3 to being quadratic of rank 4. Right? This is explicitly quadratic in the rows of the 2 by 4 matrix. Right, so they allow x2 and x2 in the matrix to become x2 primed x2. You know, depending on your convenience, it might be x1, x2 plus epsilon x0 and x2 minus epsilon x0. Yes? So, in, in, so if I do this, if I take these equations, then these guys here allow the curve, uh, sorry, allow, allow the uh, um, type 2b to uh, deform to type 2a. Yes? <coughs> But on the other hand, there, there's a kind of rigidity here. But once you've done this, if you've allowed, if you've done, if you've chosen two different x2s, then uh, you can't do this transform. So there's a, uh, these are, this is called rotating, uh, rotating formats, rolling formats. So in the left-hand side, in part A, I'm also replacing something in the top row by something in the bottom row. Yes, but here I'm doing something in the top row, some in, the, in the, this second replacement, right? The fact that x2 is rotating to x3, and this only makes sense if x2 and x2 are equal. So in A, uh, here, uh, depends on the coincidence x2 equals x2. Okay. So, uh, so let me uh, try and be brief. Uh, let's, let, let me uh, so I'm finding a way of writing the equations for the curve that will also give the equations for the n-fold. Right, so write down wedge 2 of x1, x2, x2, x3. Uh, I can write down here y1, y2, and uh, z1, z2 equals 0, and z1 squared, z1, z2, z2 squared. A times x1, A times x2, A times x3, and then here minus B. So I'm, I'm writing y1 squared minus B, y1, y2, minus B, y2 squared. Yes? So I've got nine equations. So these define a Gorenstein co-dimension 4 ring with a 9 by 16 resolution. So this is something I've been lecturing about in my lecture course here for two or three lectures. Yes? And the thing to notice here is that x1 appears linearly in four equations. Right? Only appears. The only, only place, because I've, you know, because I've sort of 
written A here as some kind of uh, token, after, after doing this token, the X1 might actually have been in the A when I was only talking about the curve, but uh, the a, because I've allowed the A just to be a token, a, X1 appears linearly in the four equation, and if I eliminate X1, the, the five equations not involving, not involving X1 are the four by four Pathians of matrix. So this is you know my champion matrix. So this is going to do all the work for me. M <coughs> is at zero x two x three squared z one x three y two z two oh, okay this is y one and uh, z two minus b y two uh, minus a yes so uh, uh, I said several times in my lecture course, this is how I write a five by five matrix. Yes, so you might be sort of disappointed that it's only four by four. It's a five by five matrix. This has got zeros down the diagonal and it's got anti-symmetric entries here. So this entry is M12, right? And this entry is M45. Yes, so Fafians. Calculate a Pfaffian, I do, uh, for, uh, involving M12, I do M12 times Z, which is 0, and then X2, Y2, X minus y, y1. So it's sort of basically 2 by 2 minus, and then this 0 times something. Right? And so these equations just give that part of the matrix. Yes? So the ones... In order to avoid, uh, in, in order to eliminate x1, I'm here, I'm writing, I'm crossing this out. And then there are three other equations, two, two other equations. So the, equa the Pfaffians, where I cancel that row, so that's uh, uh, minus, so x3 times minus a, minus y2 times minus by 2 plus z2 squared. Right, so that's uh, this equation. Yes, and then uh, z1, z2, if I do that, then I get equation z1, z2 is uh, y1 minus y1, v2, and uh, plus a2, y1. Yes, so I get these two equations here as the Pfaffian. Right? And x1 multiplies, so in this game I told you x1 appears only linearly, he appears multiplying x3, y2, z2, and a. Yes? And so you'll notice in this matrix, the 4x4 four four block, the 4x4 four four bottom block there, consists of elements in this matrix. Yes, so, so x1 appears linearly in four equations, and uh, uh, x3, the en entries m, i, j, with i, j not equal to 1, uh, are in ideal uh, x3, y2, z2, and a. Yes. And so this is, uh, so the whole ring, including x, is a uh, Lowenstein unprojection. So 
So he said, Tom won in, the, in terms of Tom and Jerry that I lectured about yesterday. Yes? So in other words, given this matrix, I can put in these, uh, the equations for x1 here in an automatic way. So this is given by, you know, I, I, I said something about Grothendieck duality and that kind of thing. Oh, this is called Kustin Miller unprojection. So these, the equations satisfied by x1 just appear completely automatically as a consequence of this fact. I've got a matrix with four entries that I'm saying nothing about, and then a four by four block, uh, six entries. The six entries there are in this codimension four complete intersection idea. Right. So if I do lambda x2, y1, z1, and so on. <coughs> so these entries are of degree uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, and then 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so, so the matrix is homogeneous. Uh, it, all its 2 by 2 minors, or all its uh, Pfaffians are homogeneous forms of the, of the right degree. Yes, and if I change, I can change the zero to a lambda. Right? I'm sorry. Lambda not equals zero, then Z1, Z2, A, and B are not needed as generators. Yes. So, uh, so this is the thing that gives rise to the, uh, you know, the allowing the hyperelliptic curve to stand up out of the plane instead of being instead of lying instead of being forced to lie flat around this conic, it's allowed to expand out and come out into the plane, and it's just that it, this works in all dimensions. And um, you know the thing I don't have to uh, don't have time to explain is there's uh, in the curve case there's no topological change in the surface case there's also no topological change the, the surfaces are diffeomorphic to each other uh, but in the higher dimensional case there's a little conifold transition the surf the type two B surfaces have singular a little nodal singularities in co-dimension n minus 3. Okay. Sorry I went over time. Questions or comments? Just uh, <coughs> because I'm curious, the singularities of X are related to uh, uh, with the vertex of the of the cone. Or yes, yes, that's right. So the uh, um, you know they just come automatically. Uh, 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 you know, a singular uh, quadrant looks like this. So uh, uh, you know this vertex is of dimension n uh, n minus three or n minus. Uh, n minus 2 according as you're in one, one case or another and then you know I get in the in the threefold case I'm talking about Calabi varieties and the, the type 2b kind uh, have two nodes right so this is a you know the thing called conifold transition and passing from the type 2a Varieties where non singular Calabi Yaws they pass to 2B and acquire these two little nodes, and at the same time, instead of having these two divisor classes corresponding to a quadric of rank four, they only have one divisor class. Right? And then when I go out to a non singular, con uh, a non -singular quintic, of course, now, now you know, by Lefschetz's theory, they only have class group one, and so uh, you know, this is. Uh, an important point. I'm, I'm not completely sure whether Horikawa understood this, uh, but you know, I mean, he did. He did most of this analysis. He knew how to do the Calabi-Yaws, but he may not have noticed. You know, conifold transitions weren't 
in fashion at the time. <laughs> yes. More questions?